Okay, so we're back with video number three. And um, now that we've got our unit circle template filled in with the radian measures, the degree measures, um, we've got the coordinates for the quadrantal angles and information about the signs in quadrants one, two, three, and four. Okay, we're going to um, still need to figure out on this unit circle template the coordinates of these special angles here that are not quadrantal, right, in the four quadrants. And the good news is um, that we can use reference triangles in the first quadrant to figure out these coordinates, and then we can use reference angles to reflect them, those values we get in the first quadrant, we can reflect them into the other three quadrants um, and save a whole lot of work. So that's what we're going to uh, look at next in this video. Okay, so we'll set that aside for just a second and come back to our circles that we were working on earlier. And remember the yellow, the yellow layer was our unit circle divided up into um, four quadrants. The green layer was eight sections. Um, so each one of those was pi over 4. And pi over 4 is one of the angles in the first quadrant we want to figure out the quadrant, uh, or not the quadrant, the uh, coordinate for. So I know um, that the radius, the distance from 0, 0 at the center here to the edge, that's 1. So if the center is my origin, then one unit over from that is going to be the point one zero. Similarly, the radius um, is going to stay the same no matter where I am, right? So from zero, zero up one, that's going to give me a coordinate of zero comma one at pi over two. So students tend to want to say, well, since pi over four is halfway, right, from um, these zero and pi over two angles, then can't I just say that this is halfway, right? So one half comma one half, but it's not. If you take a perpendicular line here and you drop it down, so see how I cut this end off here of that, so you can see the perpendicular line coming straight down to your, um, to your axis, your x-axis, um, do you see how that distance is not half of the way? It's definitely more um, than halfway uh, across the radius, and the radius is 1. So this coordinate, this ordered pair for pi over 4, it has to be more than 1 half comma 1 half. How much more, though, we can't tell just by looking at it. We're going to actually have to pull out this reference triangle. Remember in the last lesson um, that we looked at 5.2, we talked about how reference triangles take angles, their terminal point on the circle, and you drop a perpendicular to the closest x-axis, that's called a reference triangle. So if I slide out this reference triangle for pi over 4, right, now this is a right triangle because I made um, a perpendicular to the axis here. And that right triangle has angles that are 45, 45, and 90, right? Because pi over 4 is half of 90, um, which is 45 degrees. So this right triangle, um, I can I know the hypotenuse, it's a one, because that's the radius, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to come up with the length um, in the x direction, uh, which we need for the x coordinate, and I can come up with the side length in the y direction, which will give me the y coordinate of my point. So I'm gonna do the Pythagorean theorem with this right triangle, and um, since that radius of the circle is the same as the hypotenuse, that distance is one. So I have, if I pull that over here to the side, so I'm just going to slide this over here um, real quick so we can do some math with it. So I have a right angle. This is congruent to this because it's a 45, 45, 90. The um, sides here are congruent. This one is a different length, but it is uh, the hypotenuse, which is going to be 1. And remember, we call the, um, the hypotenuse C when we're doing a right triangle. So I'm going to move this out of the way here real quick. Okay, so we have uh, C is 1 for the hypotenuse, and this is my x 
side and this is my y side um, and since they're congruent um, couldn't we just say that they were both uh, the same letter right so in the Pythagorean theorem because these are the same I can say instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared I could say x for my a here x squared plus and then I can just use another x squared because they're the same length the x and the y is going to be equal to the c which is 1 squared and x squared plus x squared that's 2x squared equals 1 squared which is 1 we'll divide both sides by 2 those cancel and x squared equals 1 half and then to undo a square we need the inverse operation which is a square root so we square root both sides that brings x out by itself and then we have um, the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 2 in the denominator. Now we have to rationalize that denominator so we don't leave a radical in the bottom. And that brings us to the final answer of the square root of 2 over 2. So this length up here, x, is the square root of 2 over 2. Since these are congruent, we know y is also the square root of 2 over 2. And that gives us the coordinate now of that point. So when I put this reference triangle back onto my circle, right now, I can fill in that coordinate. So this was 1, 0. This one was 0, 1. And now I know that at pi over 4 radians, so there's my pi over 4, that coordinate at the terminal point for pi over 4 is going to be the square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Now, the nice part about that, when we come back over to this template here is if I know that results in the first quadrant, I can use reference angles to get the same results, um, the same coordinates for the, the ones that correspond in the other quadrants. Um, and so here, here is how that goes. Okay, so right now we've got this one. Now in um, the the whole green circle, if I put that back on here. Okay, this first quadrant angle with a pi over four, um, to get that same angle in the second quadrant, right? That's three pi over four. And here's what I mean by that. If I take this, ang this triangle, which is my reference triangle, and I reflect it over the y-axis, so now it's over here in the third quadrant, that uh, terminal point, that's going to be the uh, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 angle. And it's because it has the exact same size reference triangle, it has to have the exact same lengths, right, for its x and y coordinates. The only thing that's different is when I bring this coordinate over so square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2 for um, for this coordinate. Now that I'm in the second quadrant, remember the x's are negative over here. The y's are still positive, but the x's are negative. So I'm going to change the x coordinate to be a negative um, for the 3 pi over 4. Okay, now if I take that same reference triangle and I reflect it now down into the third quadrant. Okay, so same same length for my x and y. That means I still have a root 2 over 2 and a root 2 over 2 down here for 5 pi over 4. Um, so 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. This is 5 pi over 4. Um, I'm in the third quadrant though where x is negative and y is negative. So these both get negatives. And then if I take this reference triangle, I reflect it now, right, flip it over into the fourth quadrant. 
Same thing, I'm going to have the values square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 for my coordinate. This one is 7 pi over 4, because that's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, counting around the circle. But in the fourth quadrant, our y's are negative, the x's now are positive again. So I'm going to need a negative on my y coordinate. Okay, and that means we can come back here now using that idea of reference angles, right? I had my first, there we go, my first quadrant had this reference triangle here at pi over 4 or 45 degrees, and it had this coordinate root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, in quadrant 1, both are positive, x and y. When I reflect that now into the second quadrant, Right now I'm here at 3 pi over 4. That means I'm going to take this same coordinate, so root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, only my x is negative and my y stays positive. Okay, in quadrant 3, which it looks like it's cut off down here at the bottom a little bit, but in quadrant 3, um, going to fill in my 5 pi over 4 because that's taking 3 pi over 4, right, and I flip it down. Now I'm at 5 pi over 4 with that reference angle. So at 5 pi over 4 or 225 degrees, I have the same coordinate, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, but in that quadrant, quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, so these both get minuses. Okay, and then when we take that reference triangle from, let's see, where was I, this one? So when I take, oh, I have it upside down. When I take that reference, how do I still have it upside down? Oh, no, I confused myself. Let's see, put it back in quadrant one. Okay, I take that one, I flip it upside down. There we go, oh, there it is. Okay, so that was the reference triangle for quadrant three. I reflect that over into quadrant four. And now that is at 7 pi over 4, or 315 degrees. That's got to have the same coordinates, x and y, um, as all the others. So root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, only in quadrant 4, x is positive, but y is negative. So my y gets the minus, my x stays positive, and that would be my coordinates for the pi over 4 angles um, in all four quadrants. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop there with pi over 4 for this video, and then we'll do the next layer, the, um, the orange, uh, with the pi over 3 denominators uh, in the fourth recording.